pile video came to my uh, attention tonight. Um, this is Fleur, a medium Fleur. And uh, we've done a video on her once before a few months ago. And I don't know what happened to her. Her YouTube channel has 1.6 thousand subscribers. So 1,600. And she hasn't posted a video for five years. So I don't know if she's active elsewhere, but you know, what I want to show you tonight or in this video, it might be morning you're watching this. Good morning, good afternoon, good day. What I want to show you is how to quickly evaluate readings that might appear to be accurate. And this goes back to my mantra that you hear me say a lot. What is missing? What is missing? from this video what is missing from this reading and it's kind of like I guess with magic or anything else when you see something happening and then they bring um, you know the magician has something on stage and there's this bowl and they put everything in this certain bowl or they go and they um, you know they do this particular kind of thing you have to think to yourself why that bowl why that thing why is why is that in there because they don't add stuff in there just randomly for no reason there's usually a reason things are done and that's kind of what i'm thinking about in this let's just go over this it's a five minute reading i don't know if i'll show you the whole thing let's see oh and the cat's here this is imogen everybody hello imogen so imogen's here to help evaluate so please leave your comments in the video she has a basket over here and she thinks that as usual she's supposed to sit on my hands because there are hands here she can see so she wants to sit on my hands oh my lord go over here i want to sh I'm, I'm she's purring into the microphone yeah. yeah oh yeah she was trying to give her opinion All right move over move over okay so let's go to fleur fleur medium oh no mediumfleur.com like I said, I don't, if somebody knows what's been going on with her, what's been happening with her, please let me know. I'd be, I'm curious if she's still around. Okay. Let's get started. The first thing I want to show you is just this very, very beginning intro. You're not connected to anybody who passed in a plane accident, right? Yeah, I am. You are. Okay. Because there is a man who steps forward who would have passed in a plane. You see that? And you see here that this actually feels like quite a small plane at the time. Like either he's flying it or he's the pilot. Do you see that? Feels very small to me. Yes. Um, and I feel very much so too that he wasn't the only one on that plane. You see? Okay, so let's stop it right there. Did you catch? Did you catch that? So this is a theater audience. So the the law of large numbers. This video. Do you see her trademark in the corner, her, her little watermark fleur with the little flower that she has? This is a video from Fl Medium Fleur's own website. This is her YouTube, her U YouTube channel. Okay, that's a red flag right there. Why? Why is that, Susan? Susan, why is that a red flag, you say? I hear you saying that to me right now, and I'm not even psychic. My cat's saying it from off to the side here, right, Imogen? She's saying, why is that a red flag that it's on Fleur's own website with her little branding on it and everything? It's on there because she feels that this was a good reading. She feels like this was a great reading, and that's why it's on her website. So she's, she's in a theater with all these people in it. This video made it to her channel. Why not all the other readings? Why are they not on the channel? Because she doesn't feel like they're all that good. Now, I'll let you know, this video has 10,000 views. It was it was put on her channel June 24th, 2017. So it's been a while. It has some comments, 20 something comments, I believe. Uh, 20 comments, actually. And they're not very positive comments. Okay, so... I want you to look at something else one more time. Let's just take a quick look at this and listen carefully to the intro. Now I'm starting this video right when 
it starts. So listen real quick again, just, just for a brief moment. You're not connected to anybody who passed in a plane accident, right? Yeah, I am. You are? Okay. Because there is a man who steps forward who would have passed in a plane. You see that? Okay. So what you're looking for, or there's two things. Well, look at all these spaces in the audience right here. So it's not completely full. Well, it's more than I would have been able to fill. That's for sure. Nobody wants to hear a skeptic talking about <laughs> videos and how mediumship works. No, I wouldn't draw a crowd, but Fleur would. Okay. She said, you're not connected to somebody who died in a plane crash, are you? And the woman said, yeah, I am. So it starts right there. The woman has a microphone in her hand already. It starts right there because Fleur already knew that. There was some discussion already going on. Law of large numbers. Fleur probably threw out there some information saying, well, some some kind of large, uh, something that seems like it would be really, really strange. Hey, anybody out here connected to a, uh, somebody who died in a plane crash? And this woman raises her hand and then Fleur's assistant walks up the stairs and hands the woman a microphone. That's how it works. So when Fleur says, you're not connected to somebody who's died in a plane crash, are you? The woman says, yes, Fleur already knows that. Otherwise, she wouldn't have been going there. She wouldn't have clipped the video where it's clipped. It's just the way that works, okay? So we already know that a person who's holding the microphone has somebody who, she's connected to somebody who's died in a plane crash. Okay, so that seems bizarre and odd and everything odd and, and so on it would be kind of like saying do you know somebody who died in a lightning strike or was struck by lightning well actually it's probably you know what what are the odds Fleur probably knows what the odds are remember if she throws that out, out into the audience and says does anybody here have somebody who died um, and you're connected to somebody who died in a plane crash if nobody answers in the room of 100, 200, 300 people, then she just moves on. And that video is not the one that ends up on her YouTube channel. Okay. So because somebody said, yes, that is me, just as the same as, has anybody here know anyone who's been struck by lightning? Somebody in the audience says, yeah, me. They hand on the microphone and you say, do you know somebody who was connected? Do you happen to know somebody who was connected to um, being hit by lightning or you weren't or, you know what I mean? They, it's just the way it's worded, but it's, the, she already knows. Does anybody here know anyone connected to anyone who's been bitten by a shark or who has drowned or who has been caught in a fire in a house or has you know, whatever scenario you want to come up with playing the odds. I don't know what the odds are for a person dying in a, in a plane crash, but okay. Let's think about this for just a minute. So I personally think that Fleur and a lot of mediums like her, they try out these scenarios. And then whenever they, it's, it's like they're at dinner or something and they say, Hey, you know what? I don't think I've done a lightning strike one. Let's, let me just throw that out there one day. Or they're watching a movie and there's this, this scenario that's happening in the movie and they think, I wonder if any, I wonder if anybody else is, you do, that's a good one. I'm going to throw that out next time I'm in a crowd. Now, Mark Edward, as you guys know, mentalist, uh, a friend of mine, a friend of mine, my boyfriend, friend of mine, well, he is my friend, uh, my boyfriend, Mark Edward, he used to use this phrase. He saw it in a movie. I kid you not. And there's a video of his. He's getting a clown, a person dressed as a clown, walking through a cemetery at night and putting flowers on the graves. And there's somebody named Shirley. It was something he saw in a movie. He just thought, I'll try that. That's good. And he's tried it a few times. And when we were in a room of about 300 people, somebody raised their hand and they said, that's me. I'm not kidding. 
I know exactly what you're talking about. I am not kidding. I'll tell you that story after I finish talking about four. So you got to stay to the end of the video, or I guess you could just fast forward. Or... So you and I, let's think about this for a second. What are the odds? What are the best odds if you want to say somebody has died in a plane crash? Okay. Male or female? What do you think the odds are that that the pilot would have been male or female? Okay. Male, right? Um, large plane, like a... Uh, 747 or 777 or you know carrying a lot of people or a small plane that has a few people in it what what do you think are the odds that are more likely to have a plane crash have pilot error or problems with the plane that would have crashed a small plane right a very small plane something that contains you and a few friends you and your family, you, you know, just a very small plane, maybe, maybe six people could ride in it or four people could ride in it. Isn't that probably the odds? Now I I'm not looking these up. I'm just saying if I was a medium and I wanted to throw out this scenario, the pilot being male, the pilot having his family or having family in the plane are probably most likely somebody young, pretty pretty likely teenager, somebody in her twenties, very likely a female being on board, probably likely. So you're just playing the odds, and that's what I would do if I was using that. So let's look a little bit more at what Fleur says now. I, like I said, I don't know the statistics on this. Maybe somebody who's watching this can leave it in the comments. But um, let's see how accurate this kind of seems, all right? And you see here that this actually feels like quite a small plane at the time. Like either he's flying it or he's the pilot. Do you see that? feels very small to me. Yes. Um, and I feel very much so, too, that he wasn't the only one on that plane, you see? Correct. And I know he, he brings that forward for me of I'm not the only one flying the plane. There must have been quite a younger uh, person on that same flight. Do you see that? Yes. A young person. Um, and uh, somebody maybe of your own age, but that, that's a very strong link that I see there. And I know as he uh, steps forward that he, he always has a smile on his face and he's, he's making jokes, you see? He's making jokes and I want to recognize this too. Now, I feel that the destination of where he wanted to go feels like a vacation spot or it feels like we're having just a good time. Do you see that? Rather than this being a, a thing that he had to do for business. You understand that? Yes. And I know that there's very much the feeling of this plane getting lost at one point or like the signal going out. Do you know of this? Yes. Um, it feels like there's an interruption in the frequency is what I see. And I don't feel that this man doesn't know how to fly planes. It feels like he's been flying planes for a long, long time. You see? Yeah. Um, and he's like, I don't know what happened. I just couldn't control the, the airplane. Uh, I know here that there's very much, oh, uh, were there three people who, who passed in that, in that crash? Yes. Do you see that? Three people, because he talks about the three. Okay. <clears throat> do you know what I'm, do you know what that means? Do you, do you understand? Okay. That's not agreement. That means you understand what she said. So if she says, um, I, there's something about a wooded area. It's not over the ocean. Something about forest. Does that make sense to you? Well, that does make sense to what you're saying, but does it apply to what you're talking about? Maybe not. So it's a way of phrasing something to make it so that the person who's in the audience, the person, the sitting, the sitter who's holding the microphone is more likely to agree to, even if it isn't accurate. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> Does that make sense to you? So it's it's just a tactic that people will use. So I was right. It was a male. Um, I don't know what him having fun and always have a smile on his face means. Three people were killed. Somebody was about her age. 
you know, again, if it had hit, it hits. If it doesn't hit, then she moves on and you kind of forget that that's what she said. What other things were said? Um, he had, they were going to something fun. Well, not a business trip. I don't know. Do you, I guess some people fly for business trips, but um, by themselves or with their family or something, I don't know. It just feels like that's just playing the odds. Not that much. Also remember the person, in the audience is just kind of like overwhelmed, like, okay, yeah. All right. Mm -hmm, yeah. Oh, they're not necessarily being very forthcoming with, with what's going on, but they are motivated. The sitter in that audience of 200, 300 people is probably pretty excited to be talking to somebody. She, some, some somebody in her family. So therefore, she's probably going to prolong it and tend to agree to things that maybe are a stretch. Maybe there were six people in the plane that died and she's, she's whatever, Fleur says three, she, the sitter saying, well, there was at least three. You see what I'm saying? Do you know what I'm talking about? What is missing? So far, no names, no dates, nothing. I mean, the guy was an experienced pilot. Well, I'm sure it wasn't his first flight. That's all relative, I guess. So let's see what else happens. What else happens? I just really need you to know that it, it, it feels to me that there was very much the feeling of their soul leaving their, um, their physical bodies before there was any tr traumatic pain there. So I know that they very much want to recognize that. Um, I know there must have been a wooded area uh, underneath that plane where they were flying. Do you see this? Yes. Very woodsy, not water, woods, you see? And it feels to me here very much so that, oh, interesting. Um, do you see that you yourself have not visited the site of that crash, but have wanted to or have made an effort to go? Do you yeah. see? Um, but you haven't yet, correct? Correct. But I feel like it's on your to-do list as a bucket list thing of like, I feel like I want to go to that space, you see? Mm -hmm. They want you to know you don't have to in order to make peace with their passing. It's absolutely fine if you do, um, but I know that it's not necessary. So if it's something you can't bring yourself to do, it's absolutely fine, all right? Uh, I feel very much- I wanna, I wanna just go back to this really quick. Let's see if I can find that exact part on here again. I've heard this before, but I wanna see how she's handling this part about the the place it happens in and the sitter she said that it happened over a forest and well let's play it again because i i i want to hear this one more time it's just 30 seconds or something like that let's let's just take a look and then talk about it in a minute see and it feels to me here very much so that oh interesting um do you see that you yourself have not visited the site of that crash but have wanted to or have made an effort to go do you yeah. see um but you haven't yet correct correct but i feel like it's on your to-do list as a bucket list thing of like i feel like i want to go to that space you see okay I really should have a transcript on here. It'd be much easier. You have not yet gone to this place, but it feel like it's some place you'd like to visit. It's on your bucket list. The woman kind of looks a little confused. I mean, if it's over a wooded area in some place in Vermont or Montana or who knows where, do you think she really wants to go and look at, see if she can find bits and bobs of her family or part of the plane? I don't know. It's not, a, it wouldn't be in my, wouldn't be on my bucket list. That's for sure. Um, it just, I don't know. It's odd the way that was worded. Almost it was worded in a way that no matter what the sitter says, it's going to be correct. Yeah, that's what I'm getting out of that. No matter how the sitter answers that, remember the sitter is under pressure. Everybody's looking at her, you know, and she's got the microphone and she's like, oh my gosh, 
they're talking to my dead family members right now or whoever these people are because we still don't know because Fleur hasn't told us. You would think they'd know that, um, yeah, just the way that was worded. Okay, you guys can play it back if you want to. The other thing that really is bugs me is that she says the souls left the body before the pain, the real pain started. I mean, I know that's meant to be comforting, but it just goes back and revisits this really atrocious thing. Do you really want to be thinking about? I don't. We don't know who these people are who were in the plane. Somebody she's connected to, whatever that means, a employer, a cousin, a neighbor, a school friend, um, somebody from her church, you know, somebody at a workplace. We don't know. Still don't know yet. But where she said this comforting thing, she thinks, I, I just don't know that people really want to dwell on the crash itself and and the amount of pain like the the visuals of these people landing you know what i mean i don't want to go into it either here but but having i mean let's say it's your sister or your your father in the plane just revisiting that that second where don't think that's helpful for anybody trying to get rid of get, getting through grief. I don't think that's a visual or a, a something that somebody needs to be imagining. So even if she is a medium, which I know she's not, even if she's in contact with the dead, which I know she's not, if, if that was something that was said to her or she felt it in this communication, I don't think you need to say that. It just feels like those are words best left unsaid if you're trying to talk to somebody especially in a large audience it's a very emotional thing maybe it's just me i i wouldn't want to know that kind of detail but whatever i tend to people huh? who knows mm -hmm. they want you to know you don't have to in order to make peace with their passing. It's absolutely fine if you do, um, but I know that it's not necessary. So if it's something you can't bring yourself to do, it's absolutely fine, all right? Uh, I feel very much so here that they, they all love you, all three. I feel two know you much better than the third. Do you see that? Yes. Because two step up for me to acknowledge you. And it feels to me as well that since they're passing, you must have taken a year off to travel yourself. Do you see this? Not yet. No. <laughs> well, you get permission then. Um, <laughs> go see the world, darling. Uh, but I feel that there will be a time that you take off because you've worked very hard and I actually see you going through school and working at the same time. Do you see yes. that? They want you to take a break when you can, but there's a feeling of going to see the world and let go of some of the heavy burden that you've been carrying. All right? And that feels very, very, very important there. Um, I know that they, they blow you kisses. That feels very important. They blow you kisses. Uh, and I feel very much so. Uh, was one of the, the, the younger person who passes, was that a, a kind of a girlfriend of yours? Do you see that? It's my cousin. Your cousin. It was a girl, though? Yeah. OK. Um, because I feel that there's a young girl that steps forward there who feels like a very close friend of yours, you see? And I know as she steps forward, she wants you to know you're always going to have that friend on the other side, always. Um, and you as well have uh, gotten a tattoo. Do you see this? Yes. For her, you see? She likes it. I think she always wanted a tattoo, but um, <laughs> never got one, you see? But I know she knows of it. But was it done in two parts? You see this? Worked on twice, you yeah. see? Um, no, you don't understand that? No, I do. Okay. <laughs> it feels like there's either two parts to it, or, or twice is my feeling. And I know that she was with you both times. Um, I know that there also must be, um, there must be a necklace of significance to her as well. Do you see that? Yeah. Are you wearing it right now? Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Um, but she talks about this necklace too, that if you should need her a little closer to you, if you should need her around you, just put on that necklace and she'll be right there. Okay. So thank you so much. She's such a sweetheart. Curious what you guys are going to come up with. I love I love doing these videos 
I feel like I'm kind of with you, you know, you guys in your comment section are leaving me little bits and bobs that I might have noticed or didn't notice. And I find that very interesting. Okay. This will help you make peace with your with their passing. Well, we don't know how long ago it was. Maybe she had peace with the passing and then Fleur just decided to bring up this old uh, hurt. Um, they all love you two more than the other. I mean, what if it was, you know, a schoolmate that was just somebody she knew, but not like really well, or what if it was, I don't know, it just seems odd, but okay. You took a year off to travel. No, I didn't, she says. And then Fleur's answer is not yet. So Fleur's not going to be wrong. She's saying not yet. This is something you will do. Um, you worked very hard. Well, I don't know a lot of people out there who would say, no, I don't work very hard. <laughs> I don't work very hard. You worked and went to school. Okay. I'm thinking back and I'm not really sure if I know a lot of people who went through school and didn't work once they got to an age where they could work. Um, college, high school, we worked. You worked for you know, having money in your pocket to be able to go out on the weekends or you work to put yourself through school or for housing or for uh, at the at the degree you're trying to get. People work and go to school at the same time. That's most people. And if you don't work for dollars, a lot of times you volunteer and you work, um, like I say, towards your degree. You're, you're doing tasks that are still considered work to... Um, further your um, education as just a generic thing. They blow you kisses. It's not creepy at all. And she says that this is a girlfriend of yours. And she says, no, it was my cousin. And Fleur's response immediately is, yeah, but it's a girl. And she's like, yeah, okay. A tattoo it is extremely common, you guys, extremely common to get tattoos in this generation of people. This is 2017. It was still very common. People get tattoos and they get a lot of them get tattoos of in memory of something or someone that's very common. And if Fleur had been wrong, she just would have said, you've been thinking about getting a tattoo, right? Does that make sense to you? Um, and the girl, whoever she is, unnamed girl, she had wanted a tattoo also. And she, so, okay, that's an, it's not an odd thing to say, but the, the audience member, the sitter, she's just like, she doesn't really have an answer because either the, the person in the, the plane might have been too young to have gotten a tattoo, you know, like 12 or 15 years old or something like that. Or maybe she did have tattoos but the person in the audience didn't want to call that out and, you know, and make Fleur be wrong um, and worked on twice. Really? You got dead people in contact with you and they're talking about a tattoo and how you had to go in twice to get some work done on it. Like it was in two parts. That's that's the message. That's what they want to tell you. I don't know. I don't have really tattoos. So I don't know. Is that common? And you guys leave it in the comments and the, do you, do people go in and get a tattoo and then go back and get the rest of the tattoo later? Is that, I mean, how, how odd is that phrase? I don't know. Is it, you go in twice, there's two parts to it. You guys let me know. I don't know. Um, I think that's all I have on this um of the notes i noticed oh i just want to re reiterate we don't have any names we don't have any 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 evidence everything is just still kind of vague once she knows she has somebody in the audience who has uh is connected to somebody who has died in a plane crash then she's it's like Fleur is just writing the slope, writing the, the slide down into the most obvious connections and then throwing out this generic stuff like, oh, they're throwing you kisses and they they love you very much and they're watching over you and, you know, the nonsense like that. Oh, the necklace. 
So, well, you can see the woman has a necklace. I assume Fleur can see that she has a necklace on. If you're going to go to a reading and uh, you're hoping to get in touch with somebody, a lot of times people will pull out some sort of memento to take with them when they go to get the reading. It's just kind of common. Very likely she has a, a piece of jewelry that is a memory of somebody. That's not unusual. And handed down to them or in memory of, or a lot of them are getting, get the ashes put in the um, jewelry, necklace, ring, whatever. So, okay. Fleur, she doesn't seem to be active in the last few years. I don't know. Maybe she is. She's just not on her own YouTube channel. But she's probably done thousands of readings already. Okay. By this time, um, don't underestimate how much skill is in cold reading. And that's cold reading. Okay. That's, that's just plain cold reading right there. There's so much skill in it that you it feels very natural when they're having these conversations with people. And they go from here to this step, to the next step, to the next step. And it feels very calming and very natural, like somebody singing a song that they know really well. And it's because um, people like Fleur have a lot of practice at it. And it does feel natural. Okay, so I wanted to point out a couple interesting things. On the YouTube video for Fleur, and this is called Fleur, Medium Fleur, Burbank Audience Reading. 10,000 views. June 24th, 2017, on Fleur's website, her YouTube channel. She has 1.64 thousand subscribers. And the, there's 20 comments, but the 20 comments are interesting because they're talking about what Fleur's wearing. And other people are like, you know, that doesn't have anything. Why does it matter what Fleur's wearing? Okay. Somebody named Cheryl Williams, she says, I'm struggling to see how this could be for real after my reading with Fleur. I booked an express reading with Fleur for 750 pounds, and it was terrible. This is written four months ago. It was clear she was guessing, then backtracking on any no answers, and then elaborating with generic information on any yes answers. There were lots of completely wrong guesses during my reading, and one thing she guessed completely wrongly left me totally shocked. After my complete shock at her last guess, I was like, huh? She stopped the reading and said she wasn't seeing things as clearly as she would have liked. If any of the guesses were true, though, she would have just carried on just blagging on it. So that's not very flattering. 750 pounds. That's probably a lot. Emergency reading. So in other words, somebody, if you're paying for an emergency reading, that means you feel... Like, I need to pay extra to get this done now. I really need to have the answers to some questions. In other words, you're extremely motivated. So you don't see a lot of dissatisfied, extremely motivated people because you've just paid a huge amount of money to get pushed up on the list to get an appointment because you desperately need to get some kind of answer. Some kind of, I don't know, maybe she needs the password to something or she can't find the will or how, or, you know, what are her, what is it? Does she want to be buried or cremated? Or, I'm, I'm only slightly kidding. Okay. And this other person named Raven Fire Phoenix from four years ago said, how do we exist after death, after the brain dies? Why is there no coherent messages? That's what I'm asking. Why don't they help missing persons? Why don't they explain why we are all here? Why don't they explain God to you? Why don't they explain how the universe was created? Why don't they explain what it's like on the other side? Are you physical? Why don't they explain the nature of time and black holes? No. They'll state things like a tattoo and things you already know. It's infuriating. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's really good. Somebody named Snow White Beautiful responded to that comment those eloquent questions which i think are absolutely questions i would be asking somebody says not infuriating at all fleur does work with the police mostly on cold cases just because they are mediums it doesn't mean they know the secrets of the universe 
Aren't they in contact with people who are dead? Can't you ask them? She does work with the police? Really? Let's see. Who does she found? I'm waiting. Anybody know of anybody whose cases she solved? Maybe that's why she's disappeared now. That's why I haven't heard anything about her. Maybe she's so busy working on cold case files right now. Crime after crime after crime after crime is being solved and all these missing people are coming and they're just like all of them are being found right now today. And that's what, that's what's going on. That's why she's so busy. We haven't heard from her. Um, another person named Kendrick said, why all the irrelevant information? Just say it's Davy Jones, your brother, my middle name, Paul, grandmother's maiden was Lee. And then go on from there. And he's absolutely right. Where's, why do you have to give all this other information about, oh, they saw you get your tattoo and they're sending you hugs and kisses. And um, does that make sense to you? Do, you know, why does she keep having to validate it when she could just say, this is your uncle and your aunt and your cousin. And your uncle's name is blah, blah, blah. And he lives at this address. And he was he was a pilot and he's retired. And he had his his daughter on. You know, I mean, why why would you not want to give us more detail and maybe what actually happened or you know, that kind of thing? Mm. And then everybody else, I think, is pretty much talking about her her clothing. Um, so somebody else named Sheila Lowe, she says, while there are certainly plenty of frauds, I've had enough readings with genuine mediums to know the difference. Um, I was at a, a afterlife symposium. This is written five years ago with more than 500 people attending. My daughter came through with evidence that nobody else could have known about. Oh my gosh. If I had a nickel for every time I've heard that, I, my house would be paid off. Oh my gosh. When she was murdered by her boyfriend, wow, I attended a group meeting with John Edward before he had a TV show. That was a long time ago. I came at the last minute, no time for research. And back then there was no Facebook or other social media. He gave me some important information I was unaware of until a week later. That was And that was nowhere near on the internet or other media. It's fine to be skeptical, but don't be cynical. Be open-minded. No, I'm sorry. It doesn't work that way. Okay, so with Sheila low here is saying is that there's no way that john edward could have hot read her because the this information her this her daughter being murdered wasn't on social media or whatever well i mean there are ways of knowing without having social media like newspapers and gossip in a town and people know these things if your daughter was murdered okay so john edward does not hot read I've never caught him hot reading. I don't think he hot reads. I don't think he needs to. He's probably owns an island somewhere and just he's made from money cold reading. He's a shotgun type uh, uh, medium where he boom, 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 boom. All this content, lots and lots of statements. Is it a J name? No, it's not. Is it February? Something having to do with it, you know, very fast. So John Edward does not hot read. He cold reads. So Unless Sheila Lowe here has a audio and video of it, then everything that she has just said is just um, her memory of it. And she doesn't have strong recollect recollections of it because there's so much wordplay going on with a John Edward reading. It's happening so fast that it feels like um, there is content coming through that nobody else could know. But actually, it's just the way she misremembers it or she hears it and or he plays both sides by saying multiple things. Anyway, if you watch my channel and if you've watched the other videos, you can see how easy it is that this wordplay happens. And um, so Sheila Lowe thinks this and I'm sure she honestly believes that john edward gave her this information but unless she has clear evidence of the reading so somebody can listen to it over again and really listen to what he actually said like with a transcript then she's probably reading more into it than was actually there it's very common um sheila williams the same person who 
had commented earlier in this video. She says, I was open-minded. In fact, after watching Fleur's videos, I was more than open-minded. I was absolutely convinced. I immediately booked one of her express readings and couldn't wait for it. The excitement soon faded when the reading actually started. And I realized there's absolutely no way the readings I watched of her online could be real. The express rating was 750 pounds. People said I was silly paying it. But honestly, I would have happily paid double that if she had given me hope that our loved ones are still out there. After 20 minutes, 20 minutes of guessing and very vague generic information and lots of no answers, she thankfully stopped the reading and I had a refund. I was gutted. This thing about being open-minded is if being open-minded is like a good thing where we're supposed to accept things without evidence. Like we're supposed to close our ears. We're supposed to close our eyes and just accept it because we just need to accept it for no other reason except that we should be open. Well, I'm open to a lot of things, but I, I mean, I'm not going to believe in Santa Claus or the Easter bunny or anything like that. Just be to be open-minded. So, you know, we hear this often. They'll say, skeptics aren't are too close-minded they can't see they can't see this i don't get that i'm not seeing anything what what is there to see you're not giving us names you're not giving us anything that would be relevant something that would really might make us think that there's some kind of evidence for for mediumship so imogen has decided to come over here there she is because she knows that I was going to tell the end of that story about the cloud clown in the graveyard. Right, Imogen? That's what you're here to hear, right? Can you hear her purring? So <laughs> we were at Dragon Con. Let me just tell you the story because anybody who's still listening this far, you're one of my people. <laughs> and I already like you. So we were at Dragon Con in Atlanta, Georgia in 2018, I think. And my boyfriend, Mark Edward, the mentalist, he was uh, doing a lecture and the room was packed, 300 people, people standing in the walls. So, you know, lar law of large numbers. And he was doing a thing on readings. And so he'd done all kinds of great stuff. He, and this is a video up on one of my channels on my um, Susan Gerbig channel, if you should want to watch. Let me know, I'll try to find it. So he he was doing readings on people in the audience, just hot reading and cold reading and all kinds of stuff like that. But um, he threw out, he, he was going to tell everybody at the very end, he was telling everybody what he did. But in the meantime, he's just performing. It's a performance. And he tells, he tells somebody um, I'm getting, and it kind of goes into this like mini trance or whatever he does. And I'm getting this, this this I can see the scene where there's a clown and he's all dressed up as a clown and it's nighttime and he's walking through the cemetery and he's throwing or putting uh, roses or flowers on on the tombstones and there's somebody named Shirley and <laughs> as I said this woman in the audience she goes oh my god she I think she even kind of like gave a little scream like Oh my God. I mean, that is pretty, pretty bizarre. Okay. And the woman and Mark's like, really? <laughs> and she stands up and she says, yeah, there was this really odd guy and uh, that lived in her town when she was a young girl. And um, the, uh, <laughs> I have to keep moving my microphone so the cat doesn't get next to it. And he used to dress up as a clown and he would go out to the graveyard. He would put flowers on the graves. And that's what he did. It was kind of creepy and weird, but that was his thing. And she said, and to make it more, she says, my name, my name is Cheryl. But he used to confuse and confuse me with somebody named Sh um, Shirley. So he called me Shirley, but my name is Cheryl or whatever it was. And, and the audience is stunned. I mean, like, like, oh my gosh, you can't, there's no way you could have known that Mark Edward. And Mark Edward is going, you know, he's like playing it off, but I know he's stunned because it was just something he, he threw out there. 
and it stuck in this woman's case. Now, the best part is, I kid you not, after it's over, she gets up and then, you know, people are coming up to the stage and talking to Mark and, you know, shaking his hand and saying whatever they say to him and asking questions. She comes up to him and she says, how did you know that about me? That, how did you know that about me? How did you know? She, she says, I felt like I was going to throw up. How did you know that about me? And it had only been maybe 10 minutes from the time Mark did this law of large numbers kind of thing by saying, is there anybody, I'm getting this scenario. Is there anybody in this room that associates with this? I'm getting a, a man dressed up as a clown in the nighttime in a graveyard and he's putting flowers on the graves and something about somebody named Shirley. That's what he said. But what the woman heard is that he specifically reached out and told her, you lady in the, in the fifth row to the left, this is for you. And that your name is actually Sharon. And there was this guy in your hometown who dressed up as a clown. And it was just really interesting to watch this happen. I don't know if we have all of it on video. I think we might only have the part where he's, she's in the audience. Um, but the interaction afterwards, I don't know. But I was there and there's lots of people there. And it was really interesting to see how this woman um, internalized it as the message came to her directly. Like he singled her out of the audience and and made her stand up to tell her this story about a guy in the in the cemetery. And when I bet, you know, so we were trying to explain it to her that, you know, no, he didn't call on you specifically. He was, he just threw it out there and somebody, you know, thinking maybe somebody would hit on at least part of it, but no, you hit on all of it. And she was still, still like, no, no, man, that was you. No, uh, -uh there's no way you could have known that there is no way you could have known that. And you're right. There really isn't very, well, I mean, there are ways of knowing anything, but it's probably unlikely that he would have known that about the specific woman unless he'd heard it somewhere I and mean, he wasn't he wasn't using hot reading in that case but it was fascinating her reaction and how she assumed he had he had singled her out to tell her that story and that she would not believe it would not believe it she left <laughs> she left probably still thinking that hey i went to this lecture today and this guy he made me stand up and he knew my name is Cheryl and he, he, Cheryl, oh, Sharon, whatever. And um, she, knew, he told me this scenario about this time whenever I was a little girl and there was this guy in town, his name is Joseph and he was a clown and he creeped everybody out because he'd go and he'd put flowers on the graves in the graveyard at night. And everybody was like freaked out by this guy. And that's how she's going to tell the story. Because humans are storytellers and that's how we do things. We try to embellish things a little bit. I swear I'm not embellishing this story. <laughs> I, I swear I'm not because I, I promise, I promise I'm not. Anyway, so for Imogen's sake, not for me, for Imogen, can you please leave us comments? Can you please share, like this video? Can you please uh, hit the subscribe if you're not already a subscriber if you are i really appreciate it uh, let me know what you think about fleur's reading let me know what you think about uh, the possibility of having uh, airplanes accidents and i mean have you guys if somebody was to throw that out in the audience and say anybody watching this right now are you connected to somebody who's died in a in a plane crash would would you would you would you be able to put your hand up and say, yeah, that would be me or better? Is there anybody out there listening now who knows anything about a person who dresses up in a clown suit and goes around in graveyards at night and puts flowers on the graves? Anybody out there named Shirley? I want to know. Imogen wants to know. Don't you want to know, sweetie pie? She wants to know too.